So can you just introduce yourself so everybody know who you are? Uh, I'm Najee. Um, I work in music. Uh, I work for Sony, Sony Orchard. Um, I have a podcast called Cigar Talk. Um, I'm just a guy from Queens that love music. And can you tell us how you first started working in music? Yeah. Um, I started my original start. Uh, I started managing one of my homies, one of my friends on the block. Uh, his name was 360. And uh, we was in Vegas one time. And um, I don't remember, somebody put an instrumental on it. He started rapping. I was like, oh, shit, like, nigga, you could rap, bro. Like, what we do? Like, we got to figure this out. And, um, yeah, I started managing the homie. And this was probably, this was, like, 2011, I want to say. And, um, yeah, you know, we started catching a little local buzz. And um, we went on tour with Nipsey Hustle. Actually, that was dope. We opened up for Nipsey on the Crenshaw tour. Um, so, we, you know, that was kind of my start. And then... Um, he had he got locked up. He had to do five years. So from there, like I just kind of had to figure it out, like what I was gonna do. So yeah, I guess that was the start and the, the beginning of everything. And from there, how did you kind of? I don't want to say make it formal, but like kind of transform more into working on the industry side from being a manager. Yeah, um, you know, I kind of kept doing management after that. Um, <clears throat> so when when my homie got locked up, uh, there was a dude that I met. Um, his name was Josh. Shout out to Josh. And um, he was a, a booking agent at this. It was It's now UTA, but there was the agency group at the time. And, um, you know, I met him, and I was trying to get him to sign my artist as a booking agent. So, like, we connected. He ain't never signed us, though, but, you know what I'm saying, we, uh, we kind of stayed connected. And um, from there, I was kind of like, you know, I was trying to make the transition, like you said, officially, like, you know, working for labels. And um, yeah, I was sending resumes, like, for two years straight. <laughs> like, I was applying for every job. Like, I wasn't getting no callbacks, nothing. Um, and then, um, so in the meantime, you know, kind of from my artists and also, like, being outside, like, you know, anybody who was around that time, like, I was really outside, you know what I mean? So I met a lot of people, you know lot of different people just from networking and being outside and this is when podcasts like first started kind of so this is like 20 I think I started it in 2016 beginning of 2016 and um I was like yo I gotta do something that's gonna make labels like pay attention to me because right now I'm like sending this resume this shit ain't working like nobody calling me like and I know I could do the job though that's the crazy part I'm like I know if I get in here I could kill it I just need the opportunity so um, to make a really long story short, I was like, yo, I'm going to start this podcast um, just so people could see that, you know, I know people. I could get shit shaking. Um, so that's what I did. You know what I mean? I started this podcast called Cigar Talk just to really get labels to understand, you know, I'm somebody that can make things happen. Um, and it kind of worked. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used my network of just people that I knew. Like, you know, come on the show, come on the show. And it just kind of snowballed from there. So anyway, to tie it back to when I mentioned Josh in the beginning um I always kept up with him you know what I'm saying even when my artist got locked up we always just you know stayed tapped in and um he was like yo I see what you're doing with cigar talk blah 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 um he said yo I'm going to I'm leaving the agency group to go manage this artist named Macklemore um would you want to come with me and I was like hell yeah like <laughs> let's go and um Shout out to Macklemore. He get a lot of hate in the industry, but that's my dog. Like, he a real, like, that's a real dude. You know what I'm saying? And, um, but, yeah, that was, you know, kind of running around with, with Macklemore and really seeing it hands-on from a big artist, you know, especially at that time. Um, that's kind of what gave me a little bit more motion to kind of get in position. And do you have any advice in terms of building meaningful relationships? You know, nowadays there's a lot of, like, events that are specifically for networking where people just kind of run around with their phone out and like, what's your Instagram? So do you have any advice to build meaningful relationships that aren't just about like following each other? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think two things come to mind. Um, I'll say the first thing is take your time. I think a lot of people these days, like they think networking is I meet you. And then now we like is, is on like, nah, like, you know, you, you got to understand when you meet somebody, you know, it's a lot of, especially a lot of people try to network up, right? Like, so networking is somebody that is, like, above your level and then trying to help you. 
it's a lot of other people doing what you're doing and trying to do. So one is I say take your time because like relationships just ain't built in one transaction. A lot of the relationships that I've built, you know, through the course of my career is people that like, you know, we built, we stay tapped in. This this years in the making. You know what I'm saying? So I say take your time. And then the second thing is uh, network laterally. You know what I'm saying? Don't just, I feel like most people just try to network on some like, yo, whoever's up, I'm going to network with you so I could try to come up. But, you know, I've been in the game now about 10 years. And one of the things I realized is the people that we was all on the same level 10 years ago, now they all in positions. You know what I'm saying? In different positions, like everywhere. So these are like my people that like, yo, we all started together and, you know, now, yo, I can make a call over here at Spotify. I can make a call over here at this label or that and that, you know, just because I had people. And I think a lot of people forget to network laterally because your peers today are going to be in position tomorrow. And then as far as Cigar Talk, what was the, like, your original idea? I know you said you wanted to show your network, but in terms of just, like, the concept of what you're discussing, can you tell us about that? Yeah, um... So I came up with the idea because uh, <clears throat> I was at Made in America one year. And um, shout out my boy B-Dot from Rap Radar. Uh, that's my dog. And um, we was, you know, we was backstage. Um, we was in this little riser, little VIP section or whatever. And um, there was this dude who was working at Rock Nation at the time. His name was Brian Axelrod. And um, he was a big cigar guy. Like, so he used to always had his cigars out. And uh, he came through. He like, you know, I never really smoked cigars at this point. You know what I'm saying? This is before Cigar Talk started. Um, and he had cigars, and he passing them out. He like, yo, you know, boom, boom, boom. And uh, so we smoking a cigar. Next thing I know, like, we all kind of chilling. And then mad different celebrities just started kind of pulling up in the section. So I just remember it was like CC Sabathia from the Yankees was there at the time. Um, I feel like Leonardo DiCaprio was there. Like, it was just mad random ass people. And we all smoking cigars in a circle. And just talking. And um, it just felt so bossed up in that moment. I'm like, hit my cigar, like, oh, I feel like this is some bullshit. Like, you know what I mean? And I never really forgot that feeling. And I kind of, you know, I just took that and I ran with it. And I was like, yo, one day I'm going to start a, a podcast or a show that's called Cigar Talk. So I was like, yo, I, I want to recreate that moment where it just felt like bosses just talking. You know what I mean? Bosses. So kind of, you know, what I wanted to do with the content was just to really you know, have artists, execs, just people, anyone moving and shaking in black culture to really, you know, explain their story. How did they get here? Like, you know, what, what's, you know, all the gems that we trying to get, because that's all everybody want to do is like, you know, we all trying to figure it out at different levels. You know what I'm saying? So that was the goal is just to try to create something different, like with the cigars. Um, it kind of creates a, like a vibe, but then, you know, just trying to get gems from everybody. And then I noticed that you, are very like interested in boxing a lot and cover that a lot. Um, so can you talk about where like where that passion started? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm a real boxing fan. Like outside of music, by like music and boxing are the two things that I really uh, you know have a love for. And um, <clears throat> I think it started like shit. I remember back in the day. I feel like my pops when I was like six, seven, you know, he used to be having me watching Muhammad Ali like back in the day, like, yo, look at this, like whatever. And um that was the first time I just I don't know, like I remember seeing Muhammad Ali as a kid and watching the old tapes. Like, I ain't that old. Like I wasn't around when the fight like happened, you feel <laughs> me? But like, you know, watching it back and um I just remember it was Muhammad Ali versus George Foreman. That was the first fight I ever seen. And at that time, you know, it's like Foreman is the big killer. Like, this guy's like a real, like, this is one of the hardest punches in the history of people. Like, this nigga will punch your head off. And um, and Ali was just this dude that's talking crazy. Like, yo, I'm pretty. I'm a this. I'm a that. I'm a whoop. And I was just like, I don't know. It just kind of captured me. And just watching that fight and just seeing how, like, this guy was able to really overcome an obstacle that everybody thought he was going to lose, right? Like, I think hindsight is everybody, like, look at Ali, like, yeah, that's Ali, the greatest. But at that time, people didn't look at it like that. It was like, man, this guy going to lose. Um, so, yeah, I think from there, I always just, you know, I developed a love for, this, for the sport, and I just kept, you know, I watched boxing, and I do everything, you know, just kind of watching it, going to all the fights. And um, I think now that I've been able to cultivate a, a media platform, you know, I wanted to branch out just from 
from rap and music and um, also tap into my other loves. So I've been interviewing a lot of boxers, uh, a lot of people in the sport of boxing. And um, boxing is great because, like, you don't – I mean, there's nuances. Like, if you're somebody that really studies the sport, there's nuances and different things that regular people don't see. But at the core of it, it's probably the – the best sport, just because everybody knows what's going on. If a nigga's getting fucked up, you you could see that. Like, you know, every other sport is like, you have to know the rules of the game to actually get what's going on if you've never seen it before. You know what I'm saying? But, like, everyone knows what a fight is. Um, so that's why I love it, man. It's it's a great it's a great sport. And, um, yeah, I just think it's a it's a good time to, to really delve into boxing. And so do you have, do you feel like there's, like, a a relationship between artists and boxers and maybe that kind of like explains why you kind of have a similar passion just in terms of like with Muhammad Ali hyping himself up, getting people's attention around him and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think sports in general, like it's just that link between culture, like hip hop is a culture. It's bigger than the music, right? So like we all, everybody that's a part of this culture, we all speak the same language, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's a part of everybody's DNA. So I think in with boxing in particular, you know, boxing is a special sport to where, like, it's not just a sport when it's one of the big fights. It's an event, right? Like, when when people, when Floyd Mayweather was fighting, like, people go out because it's Floyd. Like, it's one of the biggest, you know what I'm saying? It's like the Super Bowl when Floyd fight, you feel me? And it's kind of the same thing right now we're seeing with, you know, Javante Tank Davis. He one of them guys that's now catching the, you know, that type of steam. And other guys, Shakur Stevenson, Devin Haney, um, you know, and, um, you know, that's what I'm trying to do right now, kind of bridge the two worlds. So, you know, I'm really tapping in with a lot of two fight, uh, a lot of different fighters and, you know, seeing how we can sort of merge things. Like you see a lot of fighters come out, they bring in rappers with them. You know what I'm saying? Rappers is tapped in and, um, you know, it's just the culture. So I think anywhere that, that we could put culture in, people going to be involved and tapped in. And do you have any plans or projects coming up that you want to tell us about? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, as 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 I'm diving deeper into the boxing world, um, I'm gonna create this uh, a new show that I got planned. I ain't gonna tell you the title yet, but um, essentially, you know, I think what I do with cigar talk and when I have people on it, it's not really about me, right? Like I'm, I give my opinion here and there, but like mostly my style and how I do is like I make it about the guests intentionally. Like like it's not really about me, but. I think as I've grown, a lot of people, a lot of people want to hear my opinion now. You know what I'm saying? What I think. Um, so I'm starting a show to where, you know, I'm going to talk about some cultural things. I'm going to talk boxing um, and just really be a figurehead in that space. I think boxing media in particular, um, the traditional boxing media, it's like old white people that's doing media. You know what I mean? So I came in and I'm at the fights. I'm the young black nigga that, you know, the fighters like, oh, shit, like who? You know what I mean? Like, so... Um, yeah, I got, I got a new show that's, that's coming out, uh, 2024, um, revolving around boxing and, um, yeah, we're going to, we're going to touch, we're going to take this media by storm for sure. And last thing, do you have any kind of quick, like one liner words of advice for creatives or anybody just trying to make it independently? Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh. I'm kind of long-winded, so I don't know if it's like... Oh, no, nah, it's okay. Whatever it might not be like one word. I got a couple <laughs> words, but uh, I just think... I guess if I had to summarize it to one word, is originality, you know what I'm saying? And persistence, so it's two words, but originality and persistence. I think today a lot of artists... Um, you know, the game's vastly changed, you know what I'm saying? With the internet, with social media, like... You know, I think a lot of people now kind of see one formula that works for somebody else and be like, all right, I'm going to do that formula because that's what it you saw work. Um, but for me, I really think that the wave and what's really going to build longevity is like just being original, like you just doing you and figuring out what that is. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just think right like right this year, 2024, rap been a little... Uh, you know, it's, it's, it ain't been the best. And I just think that's a lot of people just, you know, following blueprints that we've seen. But so I, I encourage everybody just, you know, not just rap, but any creative um, to just tap into you. Like, what is what does it mean to be you? and How do you showcase that? Um, and then the second thing is persistence. Like everything that's great, at least that I've seen in my life, everything that's great takes time. Like, There's no real easy shortcuts, even when it like 
looks easy. Like I've worked with artists that blew up and um they went viral and I guess people thought the viral moment was the first thing they did, but it was a lot of stuff to get to that moment. You know what I'm saying? So I wanna say, you know, just say to everybody, any creative, especially when you're independent, like you don't got a machine behind you, just be persistent. You know, it, it takes time. Um you got to go through the process. You can't really skip steps. Success don't let you skip steps. So, um, yeah, just take your time and be original. All right, thank you. And then last, um, we're just going to do a quick drop. So you're just going to say your name, and then I'm here with your plugs favorite. Or you could say your name and then say, like, check out Cigar Talk or whatever you want to plug, and then I, and I'm here with your plugs favorite. Right. <clears throat> yo, 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 what's up? It's your boy Najee. I'm here with your plugs favorite. Make sure you check me out at Naji Chill, all platforms. Uh, and check out my show, Cigar Talk, on YouTube. Cigar Talk, just type it in and you'll see me. Love. All right, thank you.